Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. Today is sort of a part two of how to correct typewriter ink. Stay tuned. Since uh, making the other video about uh, correcting uh, mistakes on typewriters, I've uh, acquired a few different uh, devices for correcting uh, typewriter ink, and we're going to test them out on various kinds of paper today. So the first kind of device is something you're already familiar with. I've already covered several times in the past, and that's simple correction tape. Uh, this is the Staples brand that I've been using a lot and I kind of like. The next type of correction device is correction fluid. Now, whiteout is the most common variety with a little bottle and the brush, but I... Um, got a lead on this Pentel Presto and it's a correction fluid in, a, in an applicator pen and supposedly this is better because you don't have the little brush that gets all dried and everything it's a little tip kind of a pen tip we'll try that the third type of correction device is Faber-Castell erasing pencils this is a hard rubber eraser for erasing ink on paper and with a stiff bristle brush for sweeping it away we're going to test that out and then finally this is the wallace brand uh, strikeout type um, this is an interesting product there's several different brands of this but this particular brand the wallace i had i got a better price on than the uh, correct type brand and you'll notice this says corrects originals there is another type for striking out carbon paper and if you look on the back of this a little guide that it comes with um, it not only has uh, so the strikeout type is for typewritten originals strikeout copy is for striking out on, on carbon paper there's strikeout mylar for carbon film uh, type typewriter ribbons using uh, uh, mylar tape ribbons and then there's strikeout type which is the same as this in various colors which uh, pink canary blue buff green goldenrod and uh, etc so it's an interesting product this is the first one that i've uh, acquired of this brand so we're going to try this also and of course, we're going to need a typewriter uh, to type our test text onto. So I've decided we're going to use the Corona Standard. And I have a little uh, typing accessory that goes with the Corona Standard now, which is a candelabra. And this is the Jovan Cleave approved uh, accessory for the Corona Standards or any flat top style typewriter that kind of looks like a piano. Is you get the little, uh, little toy dollhouse um, candelabra at the at the uh, craft store and you hot glue gun a flat magnet to the bottom and then put a piece of adhesive tape on the bottom of the magnet so the metal magnet doesn't scratch the uh, finish on the typewriter but that's the Joe Van Cleave approved typewriter candelabra we're going to use this for our source of typing text and of course we're going to need some paper of various kinds to test out on test out the erasers on. So I have a variety of papers here that you, that you might or I've used for typing on. First of all is copy paper, right? So simple xerography copy paper or cheap printer paper. The second one is Strathmore uh, sketching paper. Uh, this is comes in a five and a half by eight and a half inch tablet. Uh, it's, an, it's Strathmore, it's artist paper. Um, and it's general purpose uh, ink crayon colored pencil kind of paper but it types really well so i thought uh, this would be a good be a good paper to test out the various methods of correction on the other thing is letter writing paper this is ampad's writing tablet uh, basically the kind of paper you'd use to write letters on but i've also typed on it and it makes for a small nice little intimate size letter paper uh, then uh, this is another kind of a, of a paper I've typed on that's kind of more of an oddball paper, but it's it's this manuscript paper. It's kind of a newsprint style paper, uh, and it's it has the lines, of course, going horizontally along the length of the paper. But if you orient it this way, you can type crosswise to the lines, which is kind of a fun way to type with the lines in there going crosswise to your text. So it's kind of a newsprint style paper. We're going to try that out. Then we have a very similar kind of paper. This is the teletype paper that comes in the roll. That's what I've been using on my little tray table. So this is the Jack Kerouac kind of paper. 
Uh, we'll try that out. And then the Ampad uh, engineering paper. This is the greenish uh, grid paper that I, I like to blog on. It's kind of a thin paper, but high quality. And we're going to try the corrections out on that. And then lastly is our Mead um, multi-purpose paper, which is the rebranded Mead typing paper. So we'll try it out on that. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six or so types of paper we're going to be trying out on today. Okay, I've typed out my test uh, sheets of all, it's actually seven different types of paper, I believe. So they're all typed up with a description of what kind of paper and the four different methods of correction and I'm going to have an XXXX for each one and I'm going to try erasing one of the X's on the end. So I'm going to go start doing it and we'll see what our results are. Well okay let's review our results. So we'll start with the uh, with the copy paper. Um, I found the copy paper like a lot of the smooth papers it took the correction tape quite well. Um, so correction tape works really well on this smooth kind of paper. Um, correction fluid um, does cover up on all the different kinds of papers, but again, the problem with correction fluid was it leaves a bubble or a little mound of liquid and you have to wait for it to dry. If you get really careful with the tip, you can make it kind of flat and not so wet, but then it doesn't cover up so well. So the problem with the correction fluid is just you got to wait for it to dry before you do anything else, before you over type it. Erasing pencil doesn't work very good at all on these uh, smooth kinds of papers. And correction tape. So here's a flaw in my testing methodology. I typed up all of these and then I pulled them out of the machine. Well, correction tabs don't work unless the alignment of the machine is exactly where it was when it was originally typed. So if you insert this back into the machine, you'll find it almost impossible to get it to line up. So I had to retype the line correction tabs and then backspace into the last X and then type over it with the tab and it does work pretty good on all the different kinds of paper. So that's the real caveat to using the correction tabs is you have to have the original alignment. This can be a problem when you are typing and you're near the bottom of the sheet of paper and you realize you have an error up on top that you need to correct for because a lot of times the alignment of the paper slips slightly as it's feeding up and you'll find you won't be able to align well to the to the original typewritten spot. So you may have to fiddle with the paper and all that. So correction tabs can work if you if you find the uh, the mistake immediately after you type it and correct for it. The other thing about them is you might notice there's a little bit of a lot of flaking, uh, uh, white stuff is missing, and that was caused by um, the little paper. Uh, what is it called? The uh, the card guide. There's like a business card guide on this typewriter. You can put a little business card in. That little wire piece. I tried to put the correction tape or the um, tab in front of that wire, but when the type slug came up to hit it, it kind of bends it and flakes off a whole bunch of stuff at once into the machine. So you have to make sure you slip this paper behind any kind of a card guide right against the paper itself in order for it to work properly. So it can, it can be quite messy, but it does work on all different kinds of paper, but you have to have the original alignment precise. So you want to correct it uh, right after you make the mistake. Okay, let's look at the Strathmore sketching paper. Uh, it's a little bit toothier of a paper than the copy paper, and it doesn't take the correction tape quite as easily. So part of the tape stuck when I rolled it, part of it didn't, and I had to go back and re-roll it, so it gets kind of messy looking when, when on the, with the correction tape on this toothier kind of paper. The correction fluid worked okay again, but, it, but it's, it's a fluid and you got to wait for it to dry, and if you put on too much, it'll leave a little cakey mound of dried stuff that doesn't really look all that nice. Erasing pencil uh, worked on uh, a little bit better than the other, but not really adequately. This is still too smooth of a paper for a racing pencil. And again, correction tabs works fine as long as you're lined up on the original alignment of the machine. Okay, this is the Ampad writing, uh, letter writing paper. Uh, correction tape works pretty good on this paper. It's a nice, smooth, toothy paper. So correction tape is the best for this kind of paper. Correction fluid again works. It's just you gotta wait for it to dry. 
Erasing pencil actually works halfway decent. It doesn't actually erase it completely, so you may have to just type over it and hope that it doesn't show too badly. Correction uh, tabs works fine as long as you have the original alignment of the machine. And that's going to be true with all these and the correction tabs. So this next paper is the um, uh, manuscript paper. This is kind of a, a newsprint style paper. Uh, so correction tape doesn't work very good at all on this toothy paper. It just doesn't stick very well. You have to roll it on multiple times. It kind of shreds part of it. It's not even and smooth. It's, it's a real mess. Uh, correction fluid is good. It's just as long as you can wait for it to dry. And actually the fluid on this paper didn't really soak in. It kind of caked up on the surface. Uh, erasing pencil worked quite well really pretty darn good on this toothy paper. So this erasing pencil is good for this toothy, raggy paper. Correction tabs, yeah, it works as long as you're lined up on the original alignment of the machine when it was typed. This is the green Ampad Engineering Grid Paper. Correction tape works quite well on this. It does dispense quite well. The only problem is it's colored paper and you're going to see that white spot pretty easily. Correction fluid works okay, but again, it's going to leave a droplet of fluid that you have to wait for it to dry before you can retype. Erasing pencil doesn't work very good at all. And correction tabs work okay as long as you are willing to uh, get the original alignment of the machine. And also keep in mind that this particular brand of correction tape has alternate colors besides white. So you might find something that matches the green paper a little bit better if that's what you want to do with it. So this is the uh, Mead multi-purpose rebranded typing paper. Uh, the correction tape worked pretty darn good on this paper. Correction fluid worked okay, again with the caveat that you have to wait for it to dry. Erasing pencil worked surprisingly well on this paper, uh, better than the other smooth kind of papers. And the correction tab works okay too. I think. Of all the papers I tested, this Mead multi-purpose paper works the best on multiple kinds of erasing methods. And finally is the teletype paper. And this is even more of a raggy, uh, fibrous paper than the manuscript paper. Uh, so it doesn't take correction tape at all very good at all. It's, it's really bad. Correction fluid works pretty good. It's just got to wait for it to dry. Erasing pencil works absolutely the best on this kind of paper. It really does. Uh, it just takes off the top layer of fibers along with the ink, and uh, it doesn't really show through all that bad on the back side. I don't think you can see it all that bad. So it's not really removing that much paper if you're, if you're uh, careful about it. And the correction tabs work good, again, as long as your alignment is good. I think what surprised me about this test was that there was no correct one correction method that worked the best on all different kinds of papers. There were some papers that only the correcting only worked well with one type of correction method. Um, I think the most universal kind of correction method, though, that worked well across the widest variety of papers was these correction tabs. Uh, the only caveat to it is, of course, you have to get the original alignment of the typing in order for the strike over to work properly. So you have to catch the erasure, the, catch the mistake early on. And the second thing is um, you want to make sure you put the tab right against the paper and not in front of it so it doesn't splatter all this dust in, in the machine. But it's a messy method. It's going to dirty up your machine. You're going to have to clean it up a little bit more often and maybe brush it out and blow some compressed air in it or whatever, wipe it up with some rags. Keep that machine clean. Uh, I, I was hoping that this correction fluid was going to work good. Uh, it does actually erase or cover up the mistakes on a wide variety of papers, but the real mistake or the real problem with it is it takes so long to dry. You just can't, uh, when you're in the middle of writing, you don't have time to stop and wait for this stuff to dry. So I know that the companies that make various brands of correction fluid have reformulated the fluid over the years so that they don't have the volatile solvents in them, uh, which is supposed to be healthier for people 
that like to sniff glue and healthier for the environment, but it doesn't evaporate as quickly. So it's going to stay wetter longer, and that's a problem, right? I was hoping that correction tape would have worked the best on all kinds of different papers because it's the easiest um, correction method to easily find at office supply stores. But it only works good on really smooth paper. It doesn't work really well on toothy papers. And also, even on smooth papers, uh, if you're, see I was, uh, when I was doing this test, I was doing it sideways so I could do one letter at a time. But it's, if, if the uh, paper is still threaded up in the typewriter, you're going to find the only way to really use the correction tape is vertically. And when you do that, you're going to erase two letters at once because it's just, it's just too wide. The common size of tape that they provide at the stores is about two letters wide. And so you're going to end up having to retype a couple letters with it. Um, I found the correction or the erasing pencil, the uh, Faber-Castell erasing pencil, was the best easiest method of erasing if you're using the real toothy raggy papers like teletype paper. So I think the kinds of uh, correction methods I'm going to be using depends on what kind of paper I'm using. If I have a typewriter sitting on my tray table with the roll of teletype paper, I'll probably keep the, uh, the pencil with it and I'll use that for the erasing method. Keeping in mind that I'm going to have to thread up the, the correction a little bit and move the platen over to the side. So when I do my erasure and I brush off the crumbs, it won't get down inside the machine. You have to be careful about that. But it does a pretty good job of erasing on this rag paper. Um, if I'm typing on really smooth paper, uh, I'll probably use the correction tape. If it's this green paper, um, it depends upon whether I want the corrections to show or not. If I want the, if I don't want the corrections to show as much, I probably end up using the correction tabs. Otherwise, I'll just use the correction tape. So again, the uh, results were a little surprising and varied. Uh, I didn't expect there to be this much variation between the kinds of correction method and the kinds of paper you're using, but there you have it. I hope this was uh, valuable to you guys and gives you a little bit of insight on some of the various methods for correcting your mistakes, because inevitably mistakes will happen when you're typing. Well, until next time, I hope you guys have a great day.